Good evening. My name is Bob Liff, and this is the CUNY Forum, bringing together prominent New Yorkers with faculty and students of the Edward T. Rogowski Internship Program in Government and Public Affairs. By the time this show airs, we will likely be at war in Iraq. If you accept President Bush's linkage of, of uh, Saddam Hussein to Al-Qaeda, to Al to Al it is a war that began in Lower Manhattan with the attacks on the World Trade Center. Tonight we want to focus on the home front, asking how much our trademark civil liberties are being curtailed, hopefully temporarily, as the government wages war abroad. We are joined by four prominent and opinionated New Yorkers to discuss how the rules are different in wartime. Curtis Sliwa, best known as the founder of the Guardian Angels, is half of the morning duo on WABC Radio with attorney Ron Kuby. Peter Noel, a, a, a veteran reporter, is one of Sliwa's competitors, appearing with Rabbi Shmuley Boteach on WWRL Radio. Tom Ogdebeni, a lawyer, is the former Republican leader of the New York City Council. And Norman Siegel, formerly the longtime head of the New York Civil Liberties Union, now heads the Freedom Project and has been leading a series of town meetings dealing with this topic. Tom, let me begin with you. This is not the first time that, uh, that in uh, wartime civil liberties have essentially been curtailed, whether it was uh, suspending the writ of habeas corpus in the Civil War and uh, in, uh, you know, during World War I, the internment of the Japanese being a, being a horrendous example in World, World War II. II yeah. um, where, do we, I mean, uh, where do we stand now? How far is too far? Well, first of all, you know, the, the, your question is loaded because it says there's a curtailment of civil liberties, which, which implies somehow that there's an absolute standard of what our civil liberties ought to be. Our civil liberties are only as good as what the Supreme Court says they are. And it's government's job, especially in times when this nation is under threat, uh, to pass such laws and to make such rules as regulations as protect the citizenry. Now, you may say they can our, curtail our liberties, but we don't know that till the Supreme Court decides that what the government has passed, whether through regulation or through law, is an actual curtailment of those liberties. So, so you don't think that we're necessarily, we're going to go right. into this in some length, but right. uh, you don't believe that at this point that there's some limitation on what we're able to do? I don't like the word limitation. That's, so the, 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 the point is you're presupposing that we have an absolute entitlement uh, to all the liberties we enjoy. There's always been an ebb and flow of the liberties that we enjoy. And it depends on whether or not the Supreme Court thinks it's a good idea or not a good idea. So when Lombard turned down people's right to watch, wait, 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 when who turned down people's right to watch? Hold on, hold on, right you're march. messing up my format here. <laughs> well, we'll Peter, <laughs> Peter, let me. Uh, <laughs> who I'm said losing, it's orderly? I'm losing control right away. <laughs> Peter, um, you never had control. So <laughs> uh, that's good. <laughs> uh, I agree with Tom. Uh, uh, Peter. Um, the government wanted field officers of the FBI to count the number of mosques in, uh, you know, around their various commands. Um, it, it's basically ethnic profiling. In the, in, you know, in, in the face of the attacks, the aftermath of the attacks of September 11th, why isn't that a rational response to trying to, you know, trying to, trying to ferret out terrorists and, and, and uh, protect the country? Well, why not um, count synagogues? Why not count Catholic churches? Why not count uh, every religious um, um, building that, that you see? Um, the, the issues are they're, they're blaming Islam. And you don't blame Islam. There, there are people, they're ex fundamentalists, they're extremists uh, on, in, in, in every religion. And um, I, I, th I think it's, yes, it's indeed, it is um, religious profiling, it is racial profiling too. And I, I talked to Imam Shiraj Wahaj from Majid Atakwa, someone uh, Curtis knows very well, and they're harassing them every day. You know, they're trying to find out who, who's talking to who, and I'm, I'm coming here. On and the he's way. an African-American uh, Muslim. Well, of course, Fulton, yes, you know, and they're, they're trying to get into this whole thing of uh, who are you talking to, who are these African-Americans who are talking to these other people from, from the Middle East, are, are you aligned with the Nation of Islam, are you? Nonsense. I mean, it's harassment. And uh, I'm coming here today, you know, and uh, I've, I'm, I'm stopped on Broadway somewhere along 42nd Street, and uh, they, they look, they're peering into your car and different things, and they want to check to see whether or not you have a backpack. Say, do you have a backpack here? This is, this is, this is what I'm talking about. The homeless security, don't, don't start. No, don't, don't start me on the homeless security here. The homeless I security. Will, the, not, not right, not yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I just wanted to get into that. But yes, in terms of the mosque, in terms of the mosque, um, you know, they come into the mosque, they, they have people within the mosque. They are asking people, worshippers, to spy other worshippers. And that is wrong. They, they, they're creating uh, uh, a section of informants. You come in, we, we, uh, some of them who are immigrants who are not illegal in this country, they said, hey, if you spy on your brother who is praying, we will actually try to get you a green card. You know something? Right. Don't do it. They don't get you the green cards. They don't get you anything. That's, that's, that's a farce. They are in the mosque and they come in, some of the FBI agents, they come in as FBI agents, the FBI agents come in as, as worshippers themselves and they violate and they desecrate and they, they say some of the most sacrilegious things just to get people to commit crimes. Curtis? 
uh, protest is as American as apple pie. It may not be as popular, but it's uh, quite American. Where's the balance in a period when we're at, now, when we're at war? You don't mind. I'm going to depart for a second. This guy I went am, off I on a tirade here. I am shocked. I about would have this thought first. that you had just come back from the Hajj. You're making Medina. I know you're no Muslim, but if it was up to me, I'd have cameras in that Al Farouk mosque right there on Atlantic Avenue. Fool me once when you bring in Sheikh Omar Rahman, the evil one who advocates destroying the World Trade Center, and he did it from the Al Farouk mosque. And then just recently, we capture the number three bag man for Osama bin Laden, and he's bragging up a storm. Yeah, I waged twenty million dollars from Muslim businessmen all along Atlantic Avenue to support our attack on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. And you know something? Alan Funt, where are you? Candid camera. I want cameras in that Al Farouk mosque. I want to see what they're doing because twice now it's been the epicenter of the terrorist activity in our city. Now, you may make the case that other mosques should not be supervised in that capacity, but the Al Farouk mosque They've earned the cameras and they've earned the wait, 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 supervision. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, I believe that the First World Trade Center was out of a mosque on Forster Avenue, not out of the mosque on, on Atlantic Avenue. Oh, no, no, no. Fact. Sheikh Rahman spoke from the Al Farouk yeah, Mosque. That was his house mosque, mosque in Brooklyn okay. on Atlantic Avenue. Uh, Norman, is there a wartime exemption to the Bill of Rights? There shouldn't be, but unfortunately, when you look at history in this country, the answer is yes. Uh, 216 years ago, Alexander Hamilton raised the same question in a debate, and he was saying that even if we had constitutional protections, that uh, governments, uh, when they're at war, or even the fear of war, uh, will in fact erode civil liberties. Uh, the First Amendment was passed in 1791. Seven years later, in 1798, when this country was afraid that we were going to go to war with France, they passed the first Alien and Sedition Act. And the Sedition Act in 1798, even though First Amendment says, Congress shall pass no law abridging free speech. Seven years later, in the fear of war, they passed it, and it made it a crime. If you spoke uh, falsely, scandalously, or maliciously against the government. And it's interesting, Tom will appreciate this, the people who they went after were Republicans. There were uh, no Republicans. The first Republican was Jefferson. John C. Fremont in 1856. <laughs> I thought you were the first Republican. <laughs> no, no. Uh, was, but, he was the first uh, Republican uh, in New York City. I was the first real Republican in New York City. But the point is, what did the Supreme Court do? Well, no, you keep saying that. Yeah, but but the fact no absolute rights. slavery Come. was wrong, and it took years before the United States Supreme Court recognized it. When Dred Scott was decided, that, that, that was Dred wrong. The Dred Scott decision was the one that started the Civil War. But what you're saying is oh, when you rely on just the Supreme just Court, those student. nine people deciding what freedom and liberty is all about, I don't think it's that simplistic. When people violate people's rights, at that given moment when slavery was in effect, they were violating people's civil rights. You don't have to wait. But coming back to your question, World War I, what happened then? In 1917, we passed an Espionage Act. In 1918, we did another Sedition Act. And who was it focused on? It was focused on dissenters, people who were speaking out. Uh, during World War II, we've mentioned what we did. 112,000 Japanese Americans were put in internment camps. Uh, there were no crimes. None of the Japanese Americans uh, were found to have been engaged in what happened at Pearl Harbor, but we did that. During the McCarthy period, again, because of the Cold War, there was the Smith Act. So the bottom line is that historically, there is an erosion of civil liberties when we're at war. And the challenge for all of us now is to find the appropriate balance between freedom and security. As we now are on the brink of war, and probably when people are listening to the show, we will be at war. There has to be a balance. We have to protect the uh, safety of people in New York and all across America. But we also can't give up freedom, especially if the safety is a false safety. And that unfortunately happens a lot because who the government targets very often is based on stereotypes. What we've seen post 9-11, I think that's what Peter is trying to say, is that we go after all Muslims. When you're talking about the, uh, the mosque there, if we had good law enforcement, you wouldn't need those video cameras in a house of worship oh, because they wow. would be doing classic 
law enforcement investigation. Well, that is the classic. Walk in there with a the uniform on and <laughs> no. say, hey, mom, can no, you hold a check in? <laughs> can I check your ID yeah, yeah. here? Hey, by the way, are you from Saudi Arabia? Are you intending oh, And just because they're from plane? Saudi Arabia you means they're guy? a terrorist? Let me well, tell you. I mean, you. that's the assumption. You see, what? you make the classic Norman, stereotype. Norman, wrong. where were you when the government was doing this to Italian-Americans when they infiltrated the mafia? Where were you when political I correctness... I spoke up. You know that. Yeah, what about political correctness, even on our campuses? Right. See, free speech is right. challenged I've, I've every defended day. the Klan. It has I've nothing, defended plenty of people who no, I don't agree with. Free speech has nothing to do with the war. We, it, we have to be ever vigilant. You can have your You're speech You're blind denied. to history. I just gave you four or five classic you examples. Only, people only stand up and speak because it's a Republican conservative president who's now is perceived as no. attacking anti-war dissenters. No, you haven't but heard me say that. when you had the CUNY University denying tenure to a professor who said, gee, I don't like the way these professors exclude those of my bent from their discussions. And he was denied tenure and he had to go to court. You see, people yeah, aren't we so We filed vigilant. an amicus on that, you, yes. Well, God bless you, Norman, because you're one of the few people who well, stands up all the time. But, but it isn't just during wartime. People's rights are challenged every but day. But during wartime, it is exacerbated. About. It but doesn't stay. It doesn't make any difference. The oh, point sure is, does. it's up to the Supreme Court because you have no absolute rights in government. The Bill of Rights means nothing until the Supreme Court tells you what it means, and that's the way it's been throughout history. It's government's obligation to protect its citizens, and it takes actions that it deems appropriate. That's really when, not a very. When, that's not really a very conservative point of view. I mean, the, the view the government is all powerful and all. And kind of defining. I didn't say I liked it. I just told you the way it is. When Mayor Bloomberg, when Mayor Bloomberg on February 15th denied people the right to march in the streets of New York City, did they get a right to march? It was a well, not for February 15th. That's a fundamental right. And at that point, that case won't get to the United States Supreme Court. Excuse but me. for his, you're saying it's unfettered. No, no, no. People have an unfettered <laughs> right to march. Excuse me, Norman. They have a right. To they have a right to march. march. They have so a they right got their right to march. Right. One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Farrakhan's million man march. Wait. They didn't take one step. Right. So we've had marches galore where people didn't even take a step. Why did they need to walk down First Avenue when we were under a cold yellow alert? So many other groups have congregated in Dag Hammarskjöld Plaza. They've been able to say what they had to say in the shadow of the United Nations. No, this was an attempt at more. And Leslie what Kagan is no friend of peace, love, and happiness, having been a socialist rabble rouser oh, in the past, attached wait, to wait, many wait, wait. of the marches in which there were raucous rallies and total Shame disrespect you, to the Just, rules and regulations. You're going to put labels on her? Deal with her ideas. Well, you some modern-day a... radicals, your spokesperson okay. said these old commies that you sort of like revive, like right, the cadavers. Cut us, cut us, wait. Good. No, 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 no. I was, I was saying, look, I don't care if the, the code goes from orange to mango. We have a right. <laughs> we have a right, you know, to protest. Maybe it's discrimination yeah. that they didn't use mango. They didn't, yeah, you know, I'm saying, we, Bloomberg did this with the last march, okay? Right. And I'm simply saying they had a right to protest. They had a right to walk down the streets. It was a take At least right some out street. of Rudy Giuliani's. Was a take right out of Rudy Giuliani's book, and that's exactly what it was. And um, Bloomberg at that time. And I looked at him, I'm saying, what is this man doing? You want to be more Giuliani. You want, hey, we are coming right now to the steps of City Hall. We can do that. At least we can go to the steps. When people want to you know, exercise their rights to go and march peacefully and say, hey, we are against the war. He's trying to be the big time Republican and say, hey, we're going to protect the city oh. because we're going to protect the city because the Republican National Committee is coming here and we want to show them we can keep people Man. in their place. Wait, 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 come here. But, wait, let me, you were talking let me, about the Ku Klux Klan. They weren't given a right to march. They were very restricted in what they were allowed to do. But I went to court. And uh, we you did. Right. But everybody, right. if but, it wasn't for you, nobody would have cared then. But the, the point, thing is, people like speech that they feel that comfortable they agree with, with and they, they agree, agree with, with and they don't otherwise but they and the always Constitution like to you gather and everybody points the figure when it's Republican conservative allegedly taking away the rights when our rights are taken away by others when when we have less freedom when the Ku Klux Klan can't march when people complain about ethnic and racial profiling which I happen to think is a logical method of law enforcement where it's race conscious and not race predominant then everybody wants to protest it. Everybody wants to crawl into a hole. They don't want to talk about individual freedom. I went through this at the city council. How many times did we go through this? They wanted to shut me down when I wanted to open up my mouth, Norman. And so people, they, they, they don't want to. They I remember, found out they couldn't I do remember that. when my colleagues said, you can't take away money from the Brooklyn Museum, even though they desecrated the Virgin Mary. You remember that one? And I agreed with them you couldn't take away money. I could speak against it, but you couldn't take away the money. Then... The Boy Scouts of America wouldn't allow a gay boy in their troop. You know what the first thing the city council did? 
They put in a law to take away the city funding from the from the Boy Scouts well, of America. Exactly what they said you couldn't do. That's the hypocrisy. The hypocrisy that right, I hate. But you make the point. Government, whether they're Republicans, Democrats, liberals, or conservatives, the nature of the beast shows that they abuse civil rights and civil liberties. And all we're saying at this point, when you're talking about marching, nobody has the right to go down a particular street. There's no absolute right. But it's reasonably regulated. So if you couldn't go down First Avenue in front of the UN, they had to give them Second or Third Avenue. They couldn't prohibit the march, I mean, yeah. and that's what they did. And when they did that, there was an erosion of rights. Let me why read, let me read to the outer boroughs like Staten Island, let me, Queens. Why does it have to be in Manhattan? What's the matter? The, the people in the outer boroughs aren't good enough to have a march? Well, you, the you media would stand on that. Oh, no, I agree with the you on the is that part. Manhattan Central because they're too many jets. No, no, because that's where the media is. The elite from Hollywood wouldn't know how to find Staten Island or Queens to make their appearance. Let me try to briefly reclaim my show. Let me take let's let's come at this from from the opposite end. I mean, we're talking about the rights of people to protest. Uh, this city was attacked. You know, three thousand people were killed. There remains a threat of another attack. The job of the police department and to, to some, uh, to obviously an extent, the United States military, is to protect the homeland. Um, in order to do that at a time at a clear time of heightened threat, um, shouldn't there be more leeway? to restrain some of these activities if, in fact, those activities heighten the danger to the, to the like uh, what, people like in the city. Look, look, if I want to, I mean, have a sign cussing the president, walk down the street in wartime, walk down 42nd Street with a sign saying, indeed, the war, the war is wrong, Are some police officer is going to hold me and no, pull me down and no, me and no, take me away? No, Peter, what That's about, what all about? No, what about trying to tap into your telephone if they believe that you have been, have been working with somebody who is uh, who is uh, get identified a warrant as a threat. Sign. I talk get a warrant okay, sign. Even if it's, get even a warrant if it's sign. But the USA Patriot Act allows the government now to yes. do things that they weren't able to do previously. For example, in the old days, if they wanted to listen to an attorney speaking to the client, uh, they had to get permission beforehand. Now, under the USA Patriot Act, they can do it unilaterally. We all know about checks and balances. You can't give the executive branch of government too much power, and there has to be a check on the power. When you talk Whose about whose decision is that, though, Norman? Well, it's now through Congress. Uh, that will Beyond be challenged. That will be challenged, be and ultimately tested. it will go to the Supreme That's Court. That's my point, though. But your rights are not violated till the Supreme Court says your rights. No, are I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Norman, Norman, locally, locally, we have the Hanshu Act and the NYPD. Right? Well, that's now gone. So, right. Well, first of all, yes, yeah, gone. The Hanshu Act is gone. The tell NYPD the now right. can actually go right in. Barbara, Barbara Hanshu, uh, he's, he's the lawyer. He can tell you more about the, the details of the law. But there's the Hanshu Act now is, is violated. It's gone in truth. You cannot, right? Now, if the NYPD wants to infiltrate any meeting, it could be a bunch of black people meeting, a bunch of Latinos meeting, a bunch of Jews meeting. They're going to go into that meeting. And if they hear anything they think is seditious, anything at all that is critical of this government, or of the city government at all, they, uh, um, Raymond Kelly, the police commissioner, can say, we think this is offensive. We think this is threatening to the city. We think this is threatening to the security of New Yorkers. And they can arrest you. They can take you in. In World War well, One, well, a person got arrested. Let me make this point. Let me make this point. It's been here. In, oh, in, world, in World War One, a you, person, you know a person got yeah, arrested. But you can't just arrest you. They can't just arrest you. In, in, no, in, in World War One, a person got arrested for reading the Declaration of Independence in public. A minister was put in jail for, I believe, 15 years because he said the war was unchristian. How about you? That's what happens. Right. Well, we, we just had a guy up in Albany who was busted for, for wearing a, who, in a, in a, in a mall for wearing a peace sign or a T-shirt that he had bought at the mall. <laughs> so fortunately, the management of that mall, in fact, uh, decided not to go forward with the complaint. There's one injustice there. The guy who did the arrest, he got fired. Got and it seemed to yeah. me that, again, perhaps there should be some focus on what happened there. Maybe the guy shouldn't have lost the job. But the point is, is that... Throughout history in America, the 200 plus years, there have been erosions of civil liberties and they're exacerbated when we're at war. And the reason why that happens is because just like right now in New York, there's so many people who are afraid, legitimately afraid because of what happened on 9-11 and that something like that or something less than that is going to happen again and again in New York. There's fear that because of the action we're taking in Iraq, uh, assuming we go to war, 
Uh, there will be retaliation in America, and New York City is targeted. So that fear allows people to allow the government to do things in the name of security, but lessening your freedom. And the question and the challenge for all of us is to reach that appropriate balance, because I think it's legitimate to look out and to make sure that we're protecting people's security and safety, to make sure that if terrorists are here, we'll find out who they are and stop them before they do what they're doing. But at the same token, how much freedom and liberty do we give up? That's the yeah, question. But, you know, we, 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 we just touched on that mall issue in Albany. We didn't do it justice. Well, Hold you're on doing a second. Justice. I work for the mouse, Disneyland. Oh, right, right. I went down to Disney World to do a broadcast for WABC. They told me, take the beret off, take the T-shirt off, take the jacket. That's the rules and regulations. This is private property. And guess what? If I didn't want to take this off, I'd be on the outside looking But did you it. think it was wrong for Disney to tell you that? No, absolutely what, not. What difference does it matter if you're wearing hey, your look, hat it's your, their property. you want to look like a fool? If why, it's why public not? property, don't they have it? rights to know It's enough? their property. Why is it that they we have, have to rights? Impose? Yes, they have rights. And when they do that, we lost that case. And in New York, they could do what they did to that guy up right. there. But then there's a second level, and that is... Does it make sense? Yeah, well, wait, is that the notice, way we should who, live? Who challenged the law? No. A lawyer. And who gets bounced and fired? A poor schlub who's a rental cop yeah. earning minimum wage. I agree with that you. That lawyer no. earning 100 it. G's a year causes this guy to lose his job. Curtis, Where's the compassion? Where's the empathy? Where's the sympathy? I already raised Why it. Why didn't he sue the management? <laughs> of the mall well, instead might. of getting the poor guy fired. Well, Curtis, not sure he, Curtis, it's not Curtis. fair to say he got the guy oh, fired. Oh, come on. It was Curtis, let me he knows what the law is. He's a lawyer. Curtis, let me ask you a question. All you know, lawyers you, don't know the law. You know, freedom well, of... Well, they know how to spin the law. Freedom of... Uh, so do guys on radio hello? shows. Hello? <laughs> uh, I obviously don't. Um, uh, you, you know, freedom of speech is limited to the degree that you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Oh well, yeah, if there's um, a fire in the theater, you better yell is, fire. But if there is, but if there is not a fire in the theater, you can't yell fire in a theater. Um, is that a, is is there an analogy to a heightened sense of well, security? Let me give an example. Yeah. Let's go to the Al Farouk Mosque again, because we know Sheikh Rahman would give a sermon every week in which he'd speak Arabic. What about a mosque? What, what about a mosque on Coney Island okay. Avenue that has nothing to do? All right, but let's with, say they invite that, Sheikh Rahman, and Sheikh Rahman in Arabic <laughs> is saying, "These are the infidels. Kill the Jews. Kill the Americans." In Arabic, I want undercover police in that audience, knowing he's a fiery orator who organizes dissidents and then tries to plan Curtis, wait a minute, wait a minute, violent wait a attacks on okay. areas of our but city. Stop you better bet I want cops okay, in that but, audience. But do you want cops in Siraj Wahaj's Masjid at Taqwa on... Oh, I definitely where, do, where there was, I know where there was, okay. they trafficked in guns up to Canada oh, already. Come I on. definitely wait a want to know on. that. Come on. Hey, man, I'm straight come smart. On. I you know, know the deal. You have, wait a second. Wait I a second. know the deal, come man. On. Do you want cops in every mosque? No, not in every mosque. But I tell you, What's I know some standard? Catholic What's churches where they raise money for the IRA, a terrorist organization. We had a priest in the Lower East Side who was caught with half a million Curtis, dollars of for, money in his apartment for? for the IRA. Do you work for the CIA or the FBI? No, no, no. What do you work for? Hey, look, we're after terrorists. We're not allowing you religious... You information. When religious sanctuaries protect terrorism, then they have to be right for inspection. He, he, said, like rich, he said he works for the mouse. Yeah, I think you work the mouse. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. You for Tom Rich. Where did That's the priest get the half a million dollars that, that was bound for the IRA? You have the evidence that matched at top one? Jail. You have that evidence of yeah, national attack. Just ask the authorities who arrested well, them. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You have that evidence. I've never heard that. I am an investigator. Well, I'll tell you what, Peter. I've never heard that. I'll tell you what, Peter. You need to be busting your shoes more than bed sty and find out the history <laughs> of that. I do that every monster. day. And I know, and I know in my right. life it has like You'll this. Be apologizing and I know he does not run guns. You'll be apologizing to me. So you? You, you, know, you know what bothers me? We only had the discussion in time, in time of war. We have our rights taken away every day, not by government necessarily, but like I told, by people at CUNY, administrators at CUNY. There is no free speech. What you have here really is the far left trying to seize an opportunity to attack a president who's finally standing up and doing his job in protecting the United States. Our previous president did nothing when they bombed the World Trade Center. He did nothing when they blew up the coal. He did nothing when they blew up our embassies. The only time he bombed any place was when he was going to get impeached. Then he threw a few bombs at Saddam. And nobody complained about that, you know, because he was the hero of the left, our Bill Clinton. 
This is the uh, problem. I, I, I yes, it is. Norman, you may be consistent, but the rest of the people out there, the rest of the leftists only show up when they can attack a Republican conservative president who has the moral courage to stand up for this country. Well, if that's true, that's wrong. And if your true, rights get wrong. eroded in that's your definition, too. if your rights are, are diminished in the interests of protecting the people, then I trust that they're going in the right direction. And if the Supreme Court finds otherwise, then I will support the Supreme Court because I believe in the rule of law. But until then, we don't have these discussions. You didn't have too many during the Clinton administration when political correct speech was okay and you couldn't say certain things. Because, yet, yet Norman, I'm, you can't put yourself in this. You've got to put the rest of them, the far left, the people that are out there that contribute nothing for the benefit of this country except to attack. Look at Tom Daschle today. I believe in free speech, too, but he's there complaining about Bush not exercising diplomacy. I mean, he's such a whiner. It's that kind, maybe that's the kind of speech that ought to be banned. Tom Daschle. <laughs> well, I assume that you're saying that for effect. I don't think you want to... Uh... Some, we don't uh, want to ban any we don't kind of speech. No, I, no I, I was glad he said it because I think it exposed him for what he is. Well, I think that what we have but to I'm remember right. it is a marketplace of ideas, which That's is the true. premise of a constitutional <laughs> democracy. And if we can use this room as the metaphor, you don't want anyone standing at the door, including the producer, who then picks and chooses what speakers can come into the marketplace and set forth their ideas. The theory is, is that the good ideas will drive away the bad ideas. So you don't want to ban anyone's speech, including the people who make fools of themselves, including the people who are wrong. Let the debate occur. There should be more debates. There should be more town hall meetings. There should be thousands of town hall meetings in America. This country was founded on town hall meetings. We don't talk to each other. We don't listen to each other. The more we do that, the better we will be. You know, and you know, then you can reach you know, a consensus. Let me say this. You know what they ask me about free speech? You know, I'm, I'm doing this show every morning, and people call me up and say, Peter, how can you, you know, you know, back the KKK's right to march? I say, of course. You know, they say the kind of, you know the type of history, its relationship to blacks? I say, of course. I back the KKK's right to march. I back the right to burn a cross on my lawn, as long as they know I have a bushmaster waiting for them when they come. <laughs> I, I, I back that right. And I'm simply saying, no one knew I was one of the first per persons to back the right of these police officers uh, uh, out in Queens there, when they marched and they were dragging, uh, the simulating the dragging of James Byrd behind a truck. It's free speech. It's offensive. Free speech in an open society. Firefighters. Sorry. I have a right to do some right. firefighters. Yes. Yes. I think there was one cop involved in that. Yes. And I'm saying, I talked to Reverend Sharpton when I was writing the story. I said, Rev, you know, it's the same thing they're using against you. You can't say certain right. things. Right. You can't go to certain places. Wait, 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 wait. Right? So you got to back wait, these wait, wait, cops. Wait. Is this and we did. Let's say these white cops, right, were patrolling it's East New York. Right. And they've already been implicated in this situation where they're dragging the, sim uh, the simulated bird in the street there in blackface and black fro. This is important. And now they have channel. a confrontation with a black suspect. And excessive force is used. You'll be the first one yelling up and down, my golly, we knew they were a racist back then. And then they're in East New York patrolling an inner city neighborhood. That's an Curtis, absolute Curtis, outrage. The difference is speech is protected, oh, on, conduct is yeah. not. And you'd be what? the first no, one protesting against the speech. When it comes to speech, you're wrong. You would, no, no, as no, would no. Al Slim Shady Sharpton and the rest of the <laughs> activists <laughs> would be singing Kumbaya. This is, this is want the head of that rope or dope <laughs> Curtis. Rope or dope <laughs> Curtis. If the cop on his own time is going to conduct racist right. activity. I don't want him as a New York City police what? officer because they have a special function in our society. Indeed, it's indeed, just indeed. speech. You know something? Look, four guys, right? They shoot Amadou Diallo, right? Yes. A man who's actually going That's conduct, into, not speech. Check, yeah, check, and check this out. Now, I'm talking about conduct here because you, you raised it, right? No. So they shoot him, right? They yeah. say, oh, they, we think he was reaching for a gun. Even today, we find, right. we find out. If I know that, they hey, say they he, he, he was causes his own death. <laughs> he contributes his own Peter, death. Wait a minute, if the lead officer in let's that not four get minute detail was I'm, a Klansman, I'm, I'm you'd say, well, of course they shot him 41 times. Look, the guy's a Ku Klux Klansman. You wouldn't be saying, oh, Billy Chad, no, he's no. entitled to free speech we, and it's off out. He's entitled We're to free speech and off hours. He can't do anything on the job. That's the point of conduct, but they won't let me do it. This is a perfect example of your whole show. People expressing themselves. Let's get questions. Let's get questions from the audience. What about my needs? Well, you're irrelevant. <laughs> no, no, he's not irrelevant. No. Um, okay. I'm talking about his, in, his, in his home. Uh, <laughs> uh, let, let's go to what questions. If you would identify yourself, what uh, school you're from, and and we need your social security uh, number. Not well. yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna take Hi, a picture um, later. <laughs> my name is Carmel. Um, Saint Sorry, I'm from Brooklyn College, and my question is for Norman Siegel. My first question, and I am asking, 
Do you think that um, the state of the Muslims as an ethnic group would deteriorate after this war, or if it does happen? Uh, the state of the Muslims would deteriorate? Right. Words, what, what do you mean by that? Will the Muslims group? continue to suffer uh, after, oh, as a result of this war? I think that uh, there will be, based on history as we saw in World War II uh, with the Japanese Americans, that there will be increased stereotyping and discrimination against Muslims based on stereotyping. On the other hand, I hope that shows like this and government officials will ameliorate that, recognizing that that's our history, and try to ameliorate that. And I think for uh, Muslim Americans, uh, they need to uh, understand the history, learn what their rights are, connect with legal organizations, uh, these days are going to be difficult for all Americans, especially Muslim Americans. Okay. But, but you know, oh, you, and I went to Brooklyn College, 65 I graduated. Want to follow up on, I, I want to, <laughs> he's, I want to, he's older than me. I want to say something about that because I, want to, I tell my Muslim brothers and sisters, you see what it's like for us? You know, we, you're, you're, you're the blacks, uh, the African Americans, the Caribbean Americans, the ones that you, when you come into your store, you look upon us, you have certain stereotypes about us. Look at, they, they get us for driving wild black, Good they point. get us for flying wild black, they get us for yeah. thinking wild black, yeah. they get us for buying wild yeah. blacks. Do you That's realize the that in the aftermath of 9 11, like the Zagbi poll, an Arab American and other national polls indicated the group that wanted Arab Americans to be profiled the most. We're African Americans. Not Hispanics. Not white. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Okay. 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 I don't agree with is there a possibility or is, is it, will there be um, new bills and laws passed if there is an attack here uh, that will affect our society here in America? Well, I mean, obviously it happened with the Patriot Act after the, they're, after they're the they're Patriot already, Act. First they're already working on a U.S. Patriot Act, too, which will allow for secret arrests, will take American citizenship away for people who are aiding directly or indirectly uh, groups that are suspected of mm. terrorism. Uh, so, and you also see on the state level uh, the same kind of thing that's happened historically in World War I and World War II, uh, that what the federal government does, the state government, because the politicians want to get on the bandwagon of saying we're going to stop terrorism as well, even though it's duplicative. And you're not going to have the local officials do investigations. It's going to be the feds that do the investigation. No, I, I think that there are going to be more laws. I think you, you, that Norman's absolutely right. And, and I, Would you repeat I that? I think it's an obligation. I think that there's. Well, you once said that you liked me very much, Norman, and that's when I knew you were a smart guy. And I was agreeing with you. But I, I think the government has an obligation to go as far as it can. Uh, you don't wait to determine. You don't make a determination. Will the Supreme Court view this as unconstitutional? You go as far as you think is necessary to protect the people, and then you put the law out there, and then you argue it before the Supreme Court. I don't think you preempt yourself. So yes, there's going to be more legislation, but I think it's going to be done in the interest of protecting the American people. Yes, ma'am. My name is Farah Seed, and I'm from Brooklyn College. Uh, this question is for uh, Mr. Thomas. Yes. Um, you have said that uh, President Bush has the decency to fight for the country, to send for the country. Do you honestly know that uh, President Bush has a cause to go to war? Has a cause to go yes, to war? Yes, th there's a reason yeah. for him Well, I to don't go think he's war. going to war. I do think what he's doing is continuing a war. We fought Saddam Hussein uh, uh, on behalf of, of the world. The United Nations wanted to stop this madman who had cost a million lives in his fight with Iran, and then he invaded a neighbor uh, in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. And we agreed with him. We destroyed him. And yet he was allowed to remain in power, and he agreed to a ceasefire, not an armistice. It was a ceasefire in which he was told, you disarm, you remove your weapons of mass destruction, and then you will have your ceasefire. He chose to violate that ceasefire. This is not a preemptive strike. This is a continuation of an existing war against a tyrant, and I believe he has the absolute uh, international authority to do it. Now, as commander-in-chief, does he have the right to protect the people of this country? I think he said last night, if you listen to his speech, which was very powerful, why do we want to wait until this person that our intelligence we know 
has weapons of mass destruction. Everybody knows that. And he has shown an inclination to use them because he used them against the Iranians and he used them against the Kurds, his own people. He will eventually use them against the United States. Why do we have to wait and sit back and turn on our TVs and watch another World Trade Center when we know this is just a year, two or three down the road? He violated his ceasefire. There's no longer a ceasefire, and I believe them, he's morally and legally obligated to go in and take out Saddam Hussein. Because we armed him and we gave him the weapons of mass destruction. We gave him the chemicals. We gave it to Saddam Hussein. We armed him, and we're now trying to disarm him. That's what's happening here. I know you guys talk about Saddam Hussein, you know, uh, you know kill his own people, the Kurds. You know, we're fighting. Iraq and Iran were fighting, and the United States came into that. They were, they were both using chemicals against each other, and of course, the unlucky Kurds, they got in the way. That's what I'm going to say, kill no. uh, uh, four hundred. You're absolutely people. wrong. Nonsense. That Peter, was, that was a, 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 a civil yeah. uprising that and, he gets. This is a Kurt. question for all of you. If we apply this litmus test, what the hell was Bill Clinton doing bombing Serbia? Did you feel threatened by Slobovan Milosevic and the Serbians? They had no chemical, biological weapons, no nuclear capacity. He stopped after cleansing. They actually sat down, he Tony Baird, Bill cleansing. Clinton, and Chirac, and said, we can't take this to the Security Council because the Russians won't vote for it and the Red Chinese won't vote he for it. After so cleansing. we're going to bomb them anyway. Now, if we went in there to stop genocide, and I agreed with against, against Slobodan Milosevic, why can't you look at it in the same pair of glasses as to why we're going in against Saddam Hussein. Where were all the protests? I'll bet you were real busy back then with hundreds of thousands of people nah. wanting to protest against Bill Clinton. It was a liberal democratic president that nobody right? was going to protest. Everyone in Hollywood yeah. was standing up saying, yeah. Bill, stop the bombing. We no have bombing for yeah. Serbia. Yeah. Well, yeah. one of the more obvious well, I, differences I got to make that... a point. There were people who were protesting what was happening with the bombing. Clearly, it wasn't on the magnitude that was going on now. I know, but we're talking about the principle. And we have to understand now, and that question was a good question on what's the cause. This is the, one of the first times, if not the first time, that we're going in on a policy of preemptive strike. Uh, the rest of the world doesn't buy the arguments that Tom was making with regard to the issue. Uh, that doesn't this, make my issue? Or that doesn't make it No, wrong. but I'm just saying that you would think that with the world involved in this issue, including the UN, that you would think that we would have more than at most uh, what do we have? Norman. We have England and Australia going Norman. in with us at this there point. There are 60 active you know, let me conflicts just... in the world today, 22 which are hot and active. The UN does nothing. The only time the UN... All right, so now, is, 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 now is, we're going to go in. Debate. We're going to go in. I think it's a mistake. Diplomacy should have been given a chance. It wasn't given a chance. It was almost predetermined and inevitable by the people in the Bush okay. administration. Let me just ask one thing. No, no, Chirac, said, Chirac said, I'm veto anything you put out. If he would have stood tall, we wouldn't have had to have a war. Okay, we're going we to we're we're try to get back to the topic at All hand. Right. Yes, ma'am. My name is Doris DeJesus. I'm from York College. My only question is um, these civil liberties that are being taken away from us in the name of security, um, do you foresee them being returned? If only we have a liberal Democrat in office, or oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's part of the law. Of course, they're going to be. Let's, let's, I am, I'm for I'm for security, okay? Because I don't want to be boarding a bus. I don't want to be going down to the subway and don't come back. All right, I'm my family, my kids. I, I'm for that. But I'm simply saying here, they're going to use that as a pretext for taking away your civil liberties, your rights. You know, back in the '80s, we had something called a black desk where they were monitoring WLIB radio stations. You can say certain things, certain, uh, certain black activists, which of course could black backed. You know, people like Sharpton, Mason, Maddox, and all these people couldn't say a thing, couldn't cr criticize the government, they couldn't criticize cops. After we simply saying, you need to protect that right to speak out, regardless of how offensive you may sound. You need to criticize the government. You need to criticize Tom Ridge. You need to criticize everything that they're doing. They're going to be spending $9 billion a month for this war. You know, poor, you can, you can call people poor schlubs. A poor schlub named Dwight, you know, what, what's right? He was actually in a tractor right now, in a pond, in, 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 the, in, in the mall right now, because they've cut federal subsidies for his tobacco farms, right? And he's doing everything that he could. You know something? People are saying, why don't we shoot him right away? He's a terrorist. He's an American terrorist. All of these things comes under our security. They want, they're deciding right now whether we should take, them, take him out, and he's actually didn't throw a stone. He didn't throw a stone at the government, simply drove a tractor into a pond to protest Jimmy, what the government is doing. Yeah, and they don't like no, that. He was pro Before the government. You, you burst any more blood vessels. <laughs> I see your advertisements all over town. <laughs> Listen to me and the rabbi in the morning on WWRL. Hey, if I'm a white cop, you want me to listen to you. Now you're upset 
that white cops are listening to your show on the black radio station. You can't have it both ways. You can't advertise for listeners and then claim, well, white cops are No, I don't want them monitoring what I'm saying and then taking it oh, against me. I don't want them using it against me. I don't oh, want the feds please. using what I'm saying against do, me. Do you want to do an ad for him, by the way? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell us, man. You're the black <laughs> let me, tell let us. me respond. The US, <laughs> certain provisions of the USA Patriot Act will expire uh, four years from now. It was five years from last year. Uh, so the issue is an open issue of whether or not the erosion of certain freedoms will continue. But if you look at history again, you see that when they make the erosions, they usually stick. The question becomes for people like you here tonight and people all across this country, even if you buy into some of the temporary erosions of civil liberties, do you want them permanently? And you can have an effect, your voice counts, and you should be speaking out and letting people know whether or not you agree with this approach Reflect. to lessing of your liberty. rights that we have absolute. Of course if not. If I lived in Georgia in, a, in 1852, could I own a slave? That is correct. Do you th would, I be, would it have been lawful for me to own a slave? It would be lawful, but that was wrong. Well, you see, that's the whole point, Norman, because now you're speaking backwards. No, it's two levels, and you can there speak. There are no. You, you felt it was absolutely wrong, and you wanted to change Talk, it. Did you think? Did you think it was wrong? Almost absolutely. everybody. When we put the hundred and twelve thousand Japanese a Republican, because it took a Republican president to take office. Historically, you were correct. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It, wait a minute. It, and, and in and fact, Buchanan, when you take when you take the Japanese American <laughs> internments, even Ronald Reagan in 1988 called it one of the most darkest moments in American history. Right. Most people today, when they look back at the erosions of civil liberties in World War I, World War II, the Cold War, say that it was a mistake. Quintessential, the Japanese American internments. Yet, what happens is history repeats itself. When we get to the point that we're afraid again, when we're at war, those instincts take over but Norman, I and would disagree we are, with you. Nowadays, we have you more think it was right to take we the have Japanese more freedom Americans? of speech now than ever before. That is you true. You can curse but openly. You right. can attack the president. You can make fun of them on Saturday Night Live. We've never had this latitude of free speech. But you we're get, still not where oh, we should be. Wait, wait, wait. Let's free go to the next. Is greater than the next, it's ever been. Let's go to the next question. But still I got a way to go. This. Maybe you can. Uh, <laughs> Chris Jones from Brooklyn College. Um, I wanted to know if it was consistent that uh, that of. Uh, uh, freedom of speech particularly is being curtailed when um, the president is using half-truths and lies to justify war. Well, he has freedom of what half-truths and half-lies? Well, that's not, I mean, uh... Um, but I've read that the president has used uh, the domino theory of democracy. Um, Where did you read that? Maybe that was a half-truth and half-lie. Well, I mean, I think that even you would agree that the linkage between Saddam okay, yeah. and Osama is tenuous at best. Is a, is a tenuous link and is a thin reed to hang. You know, I mean, I think you can make an argument in favor I, of this I do war. Not have you argue near that, as much information as the president. Do the you United believe States. that there's a strong link there? You're arguing that this is a continuation of the 1991 law, so you don't. So perhaps, so perhaps you don't. Him. So perhaps you don't need that link. But he's making. But he's drawing this link. You know, a link that I would argue if that's if that's the link we should be going after Saudi Arabia. Well, not only that, in terms so, of the, in terms or of the, Yemen, maybe the, the in, next. In terms of the lies, <laughs> when Uncle Tom, um, Colin Powell comes, uh, <laughs> uh, and, um, <laughs> and he comes and he comes he comes to the, the UN and he reads from a dissertation yes. from uh, yes. you know from someone and he didn't that. know it was a dissertation right. when they linked Niger with uh, um, saying that they had uh, that was nuclear. Blair. Oh Niger come on! Well, 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 the same thing. Well, he's yeah. not enough. Tony Tom. Blair is the know. foreign secretary of the United Peter. States. Peter. Peter. It's the Peter. same thing. Peter, excuse me. Are you the great decider who is a righteous uh, black man, and anyone who disagrees with you is a handkerchief head, an Uncle, Uncle Tom, Tom, an brother. Oreo cookie, and a tall glass Colin of white milk? Uncle Tom. Yo, black people can't have a difference Colin of Powell. opinion here. Colin Powell, you know something? I guess you can't be a Republican you, 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 or a you, you, you know if you're black. Colin Powell is an Uncle Tom. Colin Powell has betrayed not only African Americans. Condoleezza Rice, he, too? That's Giza Condoleezza. Well, what Democrat yes, ever gave black people power? They invited him to the table but made him cook the food. Now you That's get Right. Wait, 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 because Colin yeah. Powell, because Colin Powell right now, right. Is on a, it is, what did Mark Green do? Wait, 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 w
Thank you. 800,000 white Thank Americans you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. to fight the Let's Civil go War. To the next. Let's go to the next question. Hi, my name is Danny Ortiz, and I'm from John Jay College of Criminal Justice. You want to come up here, Mr. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ortiz, and I'll, I'll go stand over there. Um, <laughs> my question is for Mr. Curtis and also Mr. Thomas, if you would like to respond. Um, que um, groups like the KKK, which are American bred, um, if they committed a terrorist attack in the United States, would you agree that there should be um, federal agents in every um, Protestant church across the South? Well, first off, let's just take the case of Timothy McVeigh and yeah, blowing up yeah. the Murtaugh building. We know and the I support right. the direct uh, covert operation of having agents go into the white identity religious movement in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, in Peoria, Illinois, the white supremacist churches that not only preached hate, but were praising what Timothy McVeigh did and actually encouraging others to do likewise. If you remember, there were many militia movements out there, mostly comprised almost 99.9% .9 of all whites. I encouraged the federal government to covertly get in there and find out what they were doing. So absolutely, you're right on the money. And many of these white supremacists hid behind churches that were really just phony fronts for their ability long, to organize long, long the and go out and do harm to Jews and blacks and people who disagreed with long them. Long before the Muslims and the mosques, the FBI infiltrated the KK Clay and their churches in the 50s and 60s. So that was a precedent before what was going on. But nobody complained too hard then, I'll tell you that. And that's what I'm talking about. And let me tell you something else. I see a lot of demonstrations about the death penalty, but I didn't hear one peep when they put Tim McVeigh to death. No, there, there, were, a, there were you candlelight listening. vigils, there were people complaining, <laughs> sure. and people complaining about government infiltration in certain instances in the examples that Curtis gave. The point is, you need to balance, you've got to make sure that the government, and especially law enforcement, doesn't trample on people's civil rights. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, my name is Dalton Lalusas from LaGuardia Community College. And um, the USA Patriot Act 1 and 2 are our government's first attempts to try to quell the problem of terrorism in this country. Now, if we don't, as, as much as people are protesting, if we don't um, support the, prob the war on terrorism, how can, we, how can we quell this problem of terrorism if we don't support that? Because that's the main focus of this problem. This was implemented because of the terrorist acts in the United States and not, not because of anything else. No, uh, nobody's me... complaining about that. It's legitimate for the government, especially after 9-11, to do all that it has to do to identify, to investigate, to prosecute and with due process convict anyone who was directly or indirectly related to 9-11. No, the but question, his question question becomes Norman. is the means to achieve that end and the same thing on the war on terrorism. Uh, people who kill people should not be protected. But wait a minute, but his question is I think more is more pointed. His question is at a, at, at a clear time of higher risk, we've experienced the terrorist attack, isn't it appropriate to have more tools at your disposal, whether it's the Patriot Act or something else, and if in fact the, those tools the, result in some diminution of, you know, of, of these rights, isn't that an appropriate response for the government to have? Because we are at a state of heightened risk. We have been attacked. We are, I mean, whether, you know, whether it's orange alert or mango alert, we have, we are at a heightened, <laughs> right, but we the, are at a heightened state of danger. I think so the, isn't, it, isn't it appropriate to have additional tools to fight additional danger? Well, assuming, region. assuming yes. that the current laws are inadequate, then yes, the premise is you can have new tools. But the question becomes, when we now have secret hearings in immigration proceedings, when we allow the government to use secret evidence. Is it, is it illegal? The question, I think, I think well, eventually no, it will be addressed. The, the point is, the point is, why not do it and let the Supreme Court sort it out? Because, well, we because we're also, we're a country that's based on principles and values. And one of the principles and values is fairness. You're innocent until proven guilty. Those things are not just words to a lot of us. We grew up in it. I learned it at Brooklyn College in political science. I believe in it. And I will fight to make sure that my government follows those right, principles no, and values. Most, Let me just finish my point. What you're talking about, though, are illegals or people who've had immigration violations who are being detained. They're not citizens. They are not entitled Jose to the rights. Jose Padilla was a citizen. That's He's a combatant. But, is it? but that's most where it starts. Most of those that you're talking about, though, and that's being argued in the courts, Right. but most of the people you're talking about are undocumented. have not acquired citizenship, have been charged with an immigration violation, and are being detained. Normally, they'd just be 
But our constitution, out. our constitution doesn't make a distinction between documented and undocumented. Well, what it well, says is people. You, wait, wait it talks minute. about people. Mm. And second, the point I'm making is not only just a legal point, it's the principles and values that America is all about. I believe we're planting seeds now, not so much for my generation, but your generation, of a new America, a new America that's not as free, doesn't have as a great liberties. And you have to come to grips with that, look in the mirror and decide, is that the America that you want? And I think it should be done in a civil discussion. I disassociate myself with my good friend Peter with regard to Colin Powell. I don't agree with the tactics that he has done in certain instances, but I don't think it advances the discussion to engage in ad hominem attacks on people. No, I will continue to attack uh, people like uh, like Colin Powell and Condoleezza well, you have, Rice. You have a First Amendment right to not, do not that. that. Not that, and I have a right to say to do that. Not that because uh, they're not a representative of of my race. They're not representing African Americans. But I don't see house. all white people you know, as being representative of my race. No, Why no, do you have to no, all of a sudden identify? I, I, but I think that when he goes up there and people say, "Hey, well, aren't you guys supposed to be thanking your know, president?" Who Bush? says? But that? why should it be monolithic? Am I, am I finished? That's a, yeah, it shouldn't be monolithic. Yes. Well, should we, should we be thanking President Bush for appointing two people into his cabinet or to bring in the, making them visible? No. And if they're doing the dirty work, if they're, if they're following a script, Colin Powell has given a script that's every my, day. That's, that's my script. script. Yeah, it's wait, 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 wait. Wait. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And they read it. That's what they're puppets. You're up in the Bronx. They're not, they're not doing anything to help us. There. So wait a second. If he disagrees with you, if people go march to your drummer's beat, they're Uncle Tom's. They're Oreo cookies. Curtis, stop. They're sellouts. They're handkeeps. Oh, thank you. Let's go. Let's go. Good evening. My name is uh, Jose Garcia, and I'm coming from uh, CCNY. I'm also a member of the uh, National Guard. To uh, I've been called to active duty already. Sorry, man. And I have I'm a, sorry. I have a, a question for Mr. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> right. Uh, for me. Right. Concerning 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 <laughs> the, this uh, <laughs> concerning the, this checks that or, or the way the cops and, and National Guard troops are going to be. Uh, Conducting security measures, right? Uh, that you think these this checks are necessary to, to protect the people in New York? And also, you said about spending billions of dollars on security uh, measures. Don't you think we will lose more if we let another terrorist attack uh, happen? Listen, when I, when I was going to England the other day for a funeral to go see my, my people, and I was traveling on Pakistan International Airlines. I was happy for them to take off my shoes and check it and everything. The, the, next, the only thing they didn't do was put a probe up my buttocks. That's the only thing. And they were good. They were good in terms of what they do. They asked me questions. They dug into my cake, my black cake I was taking for my West Indian family. They did everything. And I like that. The well, point is here. The point is here. We are going, we're coming down the street and you're walking. You know, you know a couple of people just talking. I don't know being black or white. You have a backpack on, on your shoulder. And some officious fool comes up and says, hey, let me see what you got in there. And they start poking you and they're doing different things. That's why I'm, I'm talking about exploitation. I'm talking about being overbroad. I'm talking about overreaching. I'm talking about exploiting yeah, yeah, and, 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 and stopping this isn't about liberties. This yeah, isn't about, about, this isn't I've about seen 80-year-old World War II veterans who are not terrorists being, having to go through exactly what you do He's because we're afraid about that. Right. to say, well, a certain group of people might be terrorists, but one group we know that are not terrorists 80-year-old uh, guys using Ben Gay who could barely stand up straight <laughs> and get on the airline, and they're making them take their but shoes off. But you see the off. point they're is, searching their job Curtis, Curtis he, doesn't, he, doesn't he doesn't object to the procedure. He objects to who's doing it. If the person doing it is a Pakistani, it's okay with him. No, he's not white saying person, that. Right. I didn't say, no, I didn't say that. that. The investigation is done by the TSA. It's of not course. By, by, it's not done do, by the I Pakistani. Do it's, who, it's who initiates it. He doesn't like Homeland Security, and this is coming from a Tom Riggs or George Bush, no, no. and therefore he resents it. Tom, Tom, he I'm doesn't talking, resent it. Bob, I'm talking That's about overreaching. Is. I'm talking about, listen to this. What's overreaching? What, what, Define what, it. Why are you asking certain people? Like Define a, overreaching. A, a woman is coming from, from Honolulu the other day, and they're asking her about her sex life. <laughs> <laughs> what does this have to do with security? What does this have to do with terrorism? I don't know who the woman don't is. Don't, don't, don't touch it. Excuse don't me. touch it. Yeah. After the show is over, they're we're going to discuss the woman from they're Honolulu. Curious. But until that point, I'm going to try to get a couple of more questions right. in. Uh, my name is Eugene Lerner. I hail from Brooklyn College. I would like to ask everyone uh, this question. Uh, the freedom of speech, civil liberty is just one aspect of domestic policy which is being dictated in regards to this war. Now the question here is, uh, at what point can we be sure that 
uh, it is not the war that has started uh, to alter uh, these aspects in domestic policy uh, by elements within the government who wanted to do it in the first place rather than uh, the policy being dictated by the war, the war rather being started so that they could change your policy. Right. Uh, a, lot thank of, you. a lot of the things that we've been talking about were attempted pre-9-11 and were unsuccessful. And some of us argue that 9-11 is being used as a pretext to change the tone and the principles of this country. You have to be on guard. You have to speak out for and against it. Let me try to get, we have a couple of more questions and not, not very much time left. So let me uh, quickly turn to one more question. My name is Joanna Gomez and I'm from John Jay. My question is that there are always limitations on the free access of information because the media is always censoring stuff. And we as citizens have the right to the free flow and access to the information. Now, going back to Timothy McVeigh, we're entering international. Quickly, if you would. Excuse Quick, me? Just answer the question quickly. Okay. We have much time left. We're, we're um, engaging in international politics right now. But instead of doing that, why don't we deal with our homegrown terrorists that we have? Because we caught Timothy McVeigh, but we did not destroy his organization. So well, how but, can okay, we I don't, fix I don't think that? you want to argue that we shouldn't worry about Al Qaeda attacking us in the World Trade Center until we settle. The I mean, th that, that issue, it's just high profile what we're doing, but rest assured the FBI has divisions that are constantly working on internal terrorists. I don't think that that's something that they've abandoned. We have just about a minute and a half, very quickly. Uh, my name is Daniel, I'm from Queens College. This goes um, to Peter. Um, you answered him, you said you had no problem taking off your shoes and checking your bags. Um, in Israel, every day, hundreds and hundreds of terrorist um, acts are stopped and prevented because their racial profile. If you look like an Arab, you're stopped, and it stops the hundreds and hundreds of acts. Right. Don't you think that would work here? Left. They, have a, they have a different problem, and, and I can see that because they are suicide bombers, which I'm against. If an you know, American white way, so. Jew blew up the World Trade Center, then I would have no problem stepping in line and being locked up. Because if we did nothing wrong, then right. why? I'm an American I white Jew. I would resent that kind of treatment. Yeah, I'm, I'm, time, yeah. I'm a Republican, though. <laughs> God bless you, sir. God bless you. Somebody with real moral courage that knows how to stand up. I don't have the time to answer that. I don't have the time. Uh, uh, what you did is engaged in quintessential stereotyping. Just because exes do an act doesn't mean that all exes agree with that act. What you have to do is make the distinctions and base it on individual responsibility and conduct and not use someone's race or religion Wait, as a very, proxy. I, I, want to say, I want to say one thing that's important. I very believe good. that you should use race and ethnicity as, as a part, factor. As a factor. A factor okay, let me and just, it should be conscious rather than predominant. But I think eliminating it all the way. We're just about, uh, so just that man right now. We're just about Search running out that. of time. I want to thank you all. I hope that there's been some light amid the heat. I think it was an entertaining. Uh, these are issues that deserve passion. Thank you, and we will see you next time. Stay seated. Stay seated.